Saturday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob gave his sons this charge. Since I am about to be taken to my people, bury me with my fathers in the cave that lies in the field of Ephron the Hittite, the cave in the field of Machpelah, facing on Mamre in the land of Canaan, the field that Abraham bought from Ephron the Hittite for a burial ground. There Abraham and his wife Sarah are buried, and so are Isaac and his wife Rebekah, and there too I buried Leah, the field and the cave in it that have been purchased from the Hittites. Now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful and thought, Suppose Joseph has been nursing a grudge against us and now plans to pay us back in full for all the wrong we did him. So they approached Joseph and said, Before your father died, he gave us these instructions. You shall say to Joseph, Jacob begs you to forgive the criminal wrongdoing of your brothers who treated you so cruelly. Please, therefore, forgive the crime that we, the servants of your father's God, committed. When they spoke these words to him, Joseph broke into tears. Then his brothers proceeded to fling themselves down before him and said, Let us be your slaves. Joseph replied to them, Have no fear. Can I take the place of God? Even though you meant harm to me, God meant it for good, to achieve his present end, the survival of many people. Therefore have no fear. I will provide for you and for your children. By thus speaking kindly to them, he reassured them. Joseph remained in Egypt together with his father's family. He lived a hundred and ten years. He saw Ephraim's children to the third generation, and the children of Manasseh's son, Machir, were also born on Joseph's knees. Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die. God will surely take care of you and lead you out of his land to the land that he promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then, putting the sons of Israel under oath, he continued, When God thus takes care of you, you must bring my bones up with you from this place. Joseph died at the age of a hundred and ten. The word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm The response is, Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, son of Jacob, his chosen ones. He the Lord is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Be glad, you lowly ones. May your hearts be glad. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, No disciple is above his teacher, no slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, for the slave that he become like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household? 
Therefore do not be afraid of them. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. What does fear have to do with the Kingdom of God? Fear is a powerful force. It can lead us to panic and flight or it can spur us to faith and action. The fear of God is the antidote to the fear of losing one's life. I sought the Lord, and He answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. O oh, fear the Lord, you His saints, for those who fear Him have no want. Come, O oh sons, listen to me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What is godly fear? It is reverence for the one who made us in love and who sustains us in mercy and kindness. The greatest injury or loss which we can experience is not physical but spiritual the loss of one soul to the power of hell. A healthy fear of God leads to spiritual maturity, wisdom, and right judgment and it frees us from the tyranny of sinful pride, cowardice especially in the face of evil, and spiritual deception. Do you trust in God's grace and mercy and submit to his word? When Jesus proclaimed the kingdom of God he met opposition and hostility. He tells his disciples that they must expect the same treatment if they are to live and to proclaim the reign of God. There is both a warning and a privilege in his statement. Just as Jesus had to carry his cross, so the disciples must carry their cross and not try to evade it. To suffer for the faith is to share in the work of Christ. As one hymn states, lift high the cross of Christ. Tread where his feet have trod. The Holy Spirit gives us power and grace to live as disciples of Jesus Christ. Do you trust in God's grace to carry your cross for Jesus' sake? <laughs>